You understand, it's about human beings selling themselves out. The echelon attitude here, the needs of the few outweigh the needs of humanity. And sorry, that just isn't right. You know, but it's going to have to be humanity that's going to rise up and take the stand. You're just going to have to turn off your televisions. They're going to have to get in their car. They're going to have to fire everybody in Washington, D.C. that knows and does nothing. And they're going to have to do something. You know, this apathy's got to end. Otherwise, the way we live is going to end. Period. I mean, that's the bottom line. You know, and I'm not coming from a fear space. I'm really quite angry about the apathy and the fact that, you know, when people give lectures and try to tell this, people want to stand up and fight with them. Look at what's happening around us. The indications are everywhere, everywhere. The truth is now an obscure thing. You know, the lie is the norm. There's something wrong here. What's wrong with this picture? This, none of this is right. We would have never meant to live this way. Instead of raising the consciousness that we have, they would rather just destroy the United States or destroy our, 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 our standard of living so that we're comparable to everybody else. So now everywhere is a third world nation. And that's exactly what they're doing. And they're doing it for power, for greed. We're selling out our own, and it's pisses me. It's somebody's got it. You know, but nobody will tell the truth. Nobody will come out and say, hey, you know, we've really been sold out. But there are forces within our government, like what Kennedy tried to do, that just flat out want to destroy the United States. Because look at where we are. Look at us right now as a civilization, as a society. Okay? The cities and the culture that we're living in now has totally cut us off from the land, from what our real essence is, which is nature. And, um, you know, we're starting to feed off each other now. Um, it's, it's like so bizarre. And I think enough of us, more of us, really need, need to start taking the perspective that what we're doing here isn't right. Um, you know, we, we, we need to get in touch with, with what's out there. What makes me be here? You know, as opposed to going home after work, turning on TV, watching three hours of television, going to bed, getting up the next morning, going to work, and doing the same thing over and over and over and over again, like robots. Throw the televisions away. Just throw them away. You talk about freedom. I, I see you assert your, your right to, to uh, tap my telephone, to, uh, to arrest me and hold me without, uh, without charges, to, yeah. uh, to try to preclude me from, from breathing clean air and drinking clean water and eating safe food. If I'm a woman, you'd like to... Uh, restrict my opportunity to make a choice. And I'm not your favorite guy, go ahead. <laughs> I have never felt more ashamed of nor more frightened by my leadership in Washington, including the presidency, by the Senate and... Now, let us speak. Let us speak. Yeah. Um, and I, and I would hope, I, I feel like, it was despite your rhetoric, that compassion and, and common sense have been left far behind in, during your administration. And, and I would hope from time to time that you have the humility and the grace to, to, to be ashamed of yourself, inside yourself. I want to start off with what you first said, if you don't mind. Uh, you said that I tap your phones. I'm not going to apologize for what I did on the terrorist surveillance program. If we're at war... We ought to be using tools necessary within the Constitution on a very limited basis, a program that's reviewed constantly to uh, protect us. Now, you and I have a different uh, of agreement on what is needed to be protected, but you said, would I apologize for that? The answer, the answer is absolutely not.